So today I thought I'd do something different, which is talk about Androids. Yes, I know that will disgust a few of you guys, but I do actually use a few secondary Android phones alongside my 14 Pro Max. And specifically, I want to talk about the S20 FE and some of the features I think is an Apple sheep that Samsung does better than Apple. Because yes, you might not believe this, but the iPhone is not perfect. So for some background info, first of all, I'm actually kind of a fake Apple sheep because while I have been using iPads and MacBooks for pretty much a decade at this point, I actually was not a full-time iPhone user till 2018. So before that, I was strictly on team Androids and specifically using Samsung phones. Now, the main reason I switched was because of the horrendous Exynos chip my Galaxy Note 9 had. The battery life was terrible and the iPhone XI switched to that year was way more reliable. And eventually Tim Apple got me trapped in the ecosystem. And to be honest, I'm quite happy here in the Ward Garden. I've got a ton of Apple devices that work great together, but I do still miss some aspects of Android. So yes, I did recently get myself this S20 FE for around $100, and I'm aware this is not a new Samsung device, but this does have the newest version of One UI, so this offers 90% of the flagship experience. So let's delve into what I like about Samsung's take on the smartphone. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. Now, the first thing is synonymous with Android, and it's one thing I've gotten kind of used to not having, but I'll be honest, I still do want it. And that is split screen, because on the iPhone, if you want to switch between two apps, you have to swipe left and right towards the bottom of the device. But because iPhones are quite massive now, with the Pro Max being 6.7 inches, I think we should have split screen. And so yes, going back to the S20 FE, I did enjoy having this back again because I do like having Twitter or YouTube at the top and then a messaging app below and it's not cramped like some might expect. Heck, I was using split screen on the S7 Edge back in the day that I believe was 5.5 inches. And so yes, we don't need big screens for this. And so hopefully one day we see this on iPhone. In fact, one of the big reasons I love using the iPad mini is the fact it's portable like the iPhone, but offers way better multitasking options. And considering we've heard about larger iPhone models in the works, it's about time iOS gets this. But one thing Samsung does better than the competition is the edge bar. This allows you to have preset split screen options on the right side of the device. So you don't have to fuss around launching split screen manually every time you want to use it. That's pretty neat and does enhance the experience. I will say though that pop-up windows, in my opinion, are pretty useless because they definitely feel way too small on a smartphone screen. I guess I could understand its use if you're trying to quickly text someone, but split screen and edge bar are the main features Apple should bring to the iPhone. So this could age horribly, but the next thing I wanna talk about is zoom on Samsung devices, because this is a phone that came out years ago and it has better zoom options than my 14 Pro Max. Now I say this could age horribly because as I'm sure most of you guys know by now, the big rumored upgrades for iPhone 15 Pro Max is a periscope lens, and so Apple could finally be catching up with the competition in this aspect. I'm not asking for 100 times zoom, by the way, because I don't think most need that. That's a gimmick. But I would say 20x zoom that's usable would be appreciated, because right now 15x is a pixelated mess, and I can see the use case for 20x because, for example, if there's a sign far away that you can't read, the fact you could just get your phone out and quickly zoom in and read that sign would be super clutch. So I'm hoping the 15 Pro Max is just as good as the Samsung phones right now. Now the next thing has been rumored for years, but we still don't have it, but Samsung has been offering this since the Galaxy S10 and that's reverse charging. Personally, I can see this being pretty handy for smaller devices like AirPods because I've had times in the past where I'm out and about and my AirPods are dead. And so it would be nice to charge them on the back of my phone and give them a quick top up. And yes, it won't be that fast and it's going to produce heat, but it should be fine for smaller products like earbuds. And I'll take the hit on degradation because this ultimately offers way more convenience. Plus, if Apple modifies MagSafe, it would be nice to see AirPods automatically line to the ring on the back of the device. And so, yes, it would be perfect for Apple to integrate this into the iPhone. And I remember hearing about the possibility of this first with the iPhone 11. In fact, back then, many predicted Apple moving the logo to the middle of the device was supposed to be a visual indicator so that, of course, you knew where to place your AirPods on the back of the device. 
But yeah, for some reason, we still don't have this. Now finally, by far the big feature I wanna see Apple give us and copy from Samsung is Samsung DeX. This is a pretty insane feature that I'm kind of sure Apple's never going to give us, but I'm going to pray we get it anyways. So for those unaware, this basically allows your Samsung device to connect to a TV or display and in return you get a computer-like interface that works very similar to Chrome OS. So it's got proper windows, tabs, a taskbar, etc. And for those who don't need to edit or codes on their computers and just do simple web browsing and emailing, this is perfect. And your smartphone could also be a computer. You can also control the DeX UI directly from the phone, which works surprisingly well. Or of course, you can connect a keyboard and mouse. And if I'm being honest, guys, I would gladly save some cash and take this over a Chromebook because phones are usually way more powerful in the first place. This S20 FE is not a new device. It came out three years ago, but the chip's still plenty good. And so especially when it comes to iPhones, we know how good Apple's A-series chip is. And so using the power they have to turn them into somewhat decent computers for light usage would be incredible. And actually thinking about it, considering chips and iPhones are generally more powerful than Android phones, this might not be a basic computer. You could use this for basic video editing, for example, because do remember the foundations of the M-series chips are based on the A-series chips and iPhones. And so yes, it would be pretty awesome if the iPhone became a two-in-one device. Especially since nowadays, the performance upgrades iPhones get on a yearly basis is kind of useless for regular usage. It would be nice if we could fully utilize the performance and turn these into computers. However, why I don't see Apple giving us this is simply because it would make iPads and maybe even Macs completely useless. If you could use the iPhone for basic computing needs, why get other devices? And while Apple doesn't want consumers wondering that and getting into that mindset, they want people to buy the Mac, the iPhone and the iPad and basically have as many devices. And so yes, Apple's version of Samsung DeX likely is never gonna release. I mean, take for example, the iPad, we've been wanting Apple to give us Mac OS on it, but because they're scared of this cannibalizing Mac sales, they're limiting it on purpose, even though some iPads have M-series chips. So those are all the main features I wanna see Apple copy from Samsung. And do remember, even without these features, I will still keep using iOS because it ultimately works better for me, but it would be nice if at least one of these features comes to iOS. Anyways, tell me your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.